Hello guys, welcome to this video from Skahoy Innovation Lab. I'm Casper, CEO, programmer, chief designer of Skahoy, and I love sharing technology tips and tricks with you in these videos. So it will focus on having separate zoom speed control or sensitivity control for your PVC controller. We usually provide this as one parameter that will affect pan, tilt and zoom control speed or sensitivity in one parameter. But with Reactor, it's actually possible for users like you to change this yourself if you do not like how it's done in the default configurations coming from Skahoy. So that's the theme of this video. And just to warn you, this is a masterclass. I'm going to show you super advanced concepts and you may not be able to appreciate it, but some of you may also be like, yay, that's exactly what we've been waiting for for a very long time. And that's because the way we do technology, we like to design it so that it has the capabilities and the, like the ambition to cover everything and make everything possible. And at the same same time, we're also building on a bridge from another side, which is make it easy. What you see right here on the screen is the home screen of Reactor. Reactor is the software that runs inside our panels when they have blue pill inside. And uh, that means the whole device is self-contained with a powerful web server inside that runs this UI. So that's, that's uh, the entry point for many of our controllers. And it makes it so easy to add cameras of different brands, something that has been difficult with our Unisketch controllers for years. And one of the really great reasons why Blue Pill is such an awesome technology. At the same time, if we go into the configuration tab, you will enter into a vastly different universe. This is, this is looking into the, the motor, into the engine of of Reactor. And that's where we'll spend some time today. So I hope this excites you. Please continue watching if it does. But we'll start out by adding a few cameras and then also add a panel. So first of all, adding cameras, you will have seen this in other videos, is so easy and convenient because, oh, sorry, I was about to add a panel. No, adding a device is done over here on this side. So we could add a device by discovery on the network. So see if there are any network devices that we could pick. Oh, I see there's a Canon CN500 and 300 here. So I could pick one of these, which I'll now do this one. And uh, the cool thing about auto discovery is that it's picking up the IP address and all those settings that you need to have to get started. So we'll just save it. It's connected. Yay, that's great. And we can do the same with a number of other cameras. Um, at this point, I kind of want to, well, yeah, let's just add a different device as well. So we'll add also a Panasonic camera and it does not have auto discovery enabled in our system. So I'll just pick the UE70 camera right here. And uh, so that does not have an IP address. Uh, as you'll see that it's actually, if I save this, it says missing IP. So helpful UI once again. Uh, so what is the IP address? Now, those cameras are not on the table here. They're actually at my office, which is in the other side of the town. So we are already working over a, um, a VPN connection on the internet. In other words, what, what you're seeing today from a control of cameras, in this case, the Canon here is the, um, the Panasonic camera, is over the internet, VPN connection. In other words, it's remote production we are doing, but you won't notice because our technology is easily able to bridge the latency involved in that. So that's another cool thing about Blue Pill that um, these things are taking into account already. In fact, our developers are sitting all across the globe and they are all accessing equipment in Copenhagen over the internet and developing device support in this way. So that's really comforting for the stability of and, and taking latency into account. Now, we have this Panasonic camera uh, from the UI of Panasonic. I can move this camera. You you may recognize that. And and here we have for the, for the Canon camera, uh, I should be able to do something here. Whoop, yeah, this is our showroom in Copenhagen. And there we have Hele packing stuff for you guys. Shipping out before Christmas. Now, okay. So the, um, the IP address of the Canon camera was already discovered. We'll see that in a moment, but this one is the IP address that we need because we did not have auto discovery on the Panasonic camera. So that was the IP address of the Canon here. Let's just type that in, just plug it in here, save, and we should be good with the Panasonic as well. Okay, so mm, nah, nah, Casper is not so smart. He put in HTTP, bad idea. So we just need the IP and nothing else. All right, there we go. And we should hopefully, yep, yep. It's connected. Awesome. And um, so next thing would be to add a panel. Now, <laughs> I also do not have a PC Extreme with me today, but that's the control I want to use. So what we'll do is to add a panel in a moment, but we need to spin up 
an emulated panel first. Well, it's actually not all the time necessary. You can, well, we could also do this like manually, but the cool thing is about uh, adding panels is that we can discover panels on the network. And um, we're now waiting to see panels pop up here. Oh, there we go. Some panels from our network is announcing themselves. Um, not a whole lot. We usually have like a ton of panels available. Probably people did not wake up yet. Um, let's type PDC Extreme. Okay, there we go. PDC Extreme V2. We'll just pick this guy. And there we go. It's now added. It has a missing IP address. But uh, where we are right now is sort of enough for what we want to do because we can go to the simulator here. In the simulator, you can, <clears throat> you can uh, actually really work with our panels uh, offline here. And um, the same is true for configuration tab where we'll be in a moment. Uh, in fact, this is all you need, but I also want to point your attention to the fact that if you if if you want to develop with Skyhoy panels and simulate and test models without having them physically next to you, we have a great tool called the raw panel uh, dummies, raw panel dummies, which will spin up any Skyhoy panel, an instance of any Skyhoy panel for uh, emulation. And um, just a quick pointer here, go to our GitHub repository, github.com Skyhoy. Go to repositories. Here you see all our public repositories. You go to raw panel dummies releases. This is where you then click this download link. You get to this page. You pick the package that fits your operating system. So Windows, Mac, Linux. In my case, this is Mac and M1 Mac. So I would download this guy. And then uh, after doing that, you need to uh, run through some different uh, hoops of craze with uh, checking or uh, basically confirming this, the software because it is uh, the, the Mac for security reasons will ask you things like, uh, do you really run a, run this package? So that is a description of that. So let's just go back to the front page. I want to know, uh, make sure you know this, click that link or that link to get into a description of how to run these applications, uh, start them up if you have these security pop-ups coming. But the, uh, the main thing is that you download this and then, um, I have it already downloaded here. So in this folder, I would have the application. It's called raw panel dummies underscore and then this one. So if I run this, you see the application is saying something like, oh, no panels is set up. So uh, important with these CLI ap applications, command line applications is that dash H will give you a list of commands you can use. Read through this list if you want. One of the important ones would be list. If you do that, you see all the panel names that you can choose or models. And uh, one, the, the one that we'll use today would be PC Extreme V2. So I could now put this in here, panel PC Extreme V2. And there you go. We have spun up a virtual instance of a PC Extreme. Not necessary for this demonstration because it's also all self-contained inside of Reactor, but it's still a very powerful thing if you want to develop raw panel applications with Skyhoy. We can thus still um, edit here. So for this panel that does not have an IP address, we can type in the IP address of this computer, which I think, hope, whatever is uh, this and the port number. So let's just try that. And it actually is connected now. So what you'll see if you go over here is that the panel, the emulated panel just changed around a little bit. We have a home menu. We have a, you know some uh, standard navigational buttons. And that is all coming from this configuration. So what we need to do now is to take the two cameras that we have added as devices and add as cameras here. So just quickly, I will simply uh, see from device collection, that's a good choice. I'll just quickly add these two cameras because we already have them in the system. So we can so easily add them over here. And uh, by the way, if we go here, you can see they are now at the bottom of the screen. So we have CIN500, we have the AWUE70 camera from Panasonic. And uh, then the uh, the whole UI here is adjusting to that. Whew, that's a lot of information to get started, guys. But we are now ready to look at joystick sensitivity. But first, let's see that this controller actually do control the, um, the, the, the two cameras we have. So I need to split my screen a little bit here. So let's just put the emulator over here and then the other side of the web browser over here. Yeah, so finally, it was a little bit useful having it separated out like that. Okay, now um, it looks like we have the Panasonic camera selected. So let's just go up up to the joystick here. And then um, as I click and drag, then you can see that I'm actually controlling the Panasonic camera, right? I can also tilt and go in the other direction. So this is our emulation tool. It would be just 
how it worked if you had a physical joystick on a PTC Extreme, then you would do these things from here. We can also zoom, and that is typically what happens when you turn the ring of the joystick. Let's just zoom all the way out. Now let's check the Canon camera. So on this controller, we will now pick the Canon camera and then go back to the joystick. Let's see if that works. We have control, pan, tilt. Yes, thank you. Of the Canon camera. Now, so that works. Joystick sensitivity is reducing or managing the, f the maximum speed of full swing on the joystick. Full swing means all the way to the side. And it's going crazy like that, right? So we'll just not want that because that might be like too, too coarse a resolution for managing the joystick. So on these, con on these configurations, there is usually a variable added to a knob. And in this case, with the Canon configuration for the PC Extreme, if you go into system and you uh, look at the encoders you have up here, there you have joystick sensitivity. Let's reduce that all the way down to one. And if I do so, and I drag this handle, you'll see full swing is giving me a really modest speed of the camera, right? So that joystick sensitivity, now, now that makes sense, right? And I can also use the same for pan. It also applies to zoom. So if I'm zooming in, it's the slow speed of zooming in that I'm having because of joystick sensitivity. And that's exactly what we want to separate out. That's the, the we want to have something called zoom sensitivity, right? We could put it on this encoder. That seems to be a free slot. If I turn this value up, I would zoom pretty quickly, all right? So now this is established. It turns out that on the Panasonic configuration, for whatever reason, joystick sensitivity is not a part of the configuration. I couldn't find it. So we would have to add it first to the menu here. It's actually still available underneath because there is a variable defined in the system, joystick sense, that we just need to apply to an encoder. So it gives me a chance to just show you how that works. Okay, so uh, really what we would do is to... Um, I'll pick a place on this controller where we want to add it. So, okay, mission number one would be to add joystick sensitivity for the Panasonic camera. And now we get into the configuration tab. And this is where you may get um, uh, confused a little bit. But I'll try to give you the best explanation here. But it's a very powerful and advanced tool. All our controllers are like layers. So when you have any of these functions, they are like on a layer that if that layer is visible, then it would occlude another layer where the same component might be defined. So, uh, and I, I don't think I could spend too much time to really explain that today. But um, if I go into the PTC extreme configuration, what is called normal operation here into the, let me see, um, we need the camera control layers. This is where we have two included configurations called um, for the Canon XE series and for the Panasonic PTC cameras. And inside the Panasonic PTC cameras, this is where we find definitions of everything that is happening on these adjustment knobs up here. So maybe you can see that uh, each of these, these are layers, they actually represent the menus you see here. So in fact, if I use the, this mode is simulation mode. So if I now press this button, you'll see that the home layer gets enabled. So everything on the home layer, these behaviors are now being visible on the controller, right? If I click this one, exposure, this is enabled. If I click this one, this one is enabled. If I click this one, this one is enabled and so on. We needed to go into system, right? Because this is the encoder that we want to to uh, to affect. Actually, encoder number eight, um, I think it is, this, this guy. Um, so uh, let me see, what is it we have here? It seems like we already have a variable. Uh, it's a power on off. Okay, may not be available for this one, but um, I want to see, let me see, in system, uh, on this encoder number eight, we want to put this. So I'll just change this over and say, I want this to manage the variable called joystick sensitivity. Now, just trust me on this. That's what we want. I also want to remove these modifiers here. I don't need those. Submit. And then it's asking me, do you want to use a behavior called step change? Usually you press confirm. And uh, we are actually now, oh, we can see it here in the simulator. See, joystick sensitivity is actually shown right here. So let's let's quickly go check on the uh, emulation if, if that is, in fact, uh, also the case over here. Yeah, we have the Panasonic camera selected. Joystick sensitivity is here. Can I change it? 
Yes, I can. Okay, so that variable is now included. Could be fun to see if this actually works. So let's just pick up the, the, the Panasonic camera. Uh, let's try zoom. We zoom in all, you know, as fast as we can. Okay, that's it. Zoom out again. So now with just uh, and okay, let's try pan. Yep. And that's also pretty quickly. So that's nice. Now let's uh, reduce joystick sensitivity uh, j all the way down to one. Let's just do that. Oh, you see, it actually is working. Now you see the speed is super slow. That is almost too slow. Maybe it's a good thing that joystick sensitivity for the Canon and Panasonic cameras are actually separate variables because it turns out that one and one in the other case gives different speeds. So this is the kind of thing you as an operator would be able to, to tweak a little bit. But clearly this works. It works for pan, tilt, zoom. Uh, oh, wait. For the zoom, we actually not. Yeah, it also works for zoom because... I can clearly see the effect on the full swing zoom of joystick sensitivity. So, so far we have established how do we include control of a variable in the system. This variable is already defined and has a function. Uh, let's just see where it is. Uh, I think I'll just make this slightly bigger, less uh, smaller, the, the UI, so we can see a little bit more at a time. So um, now I think we have joystick sense we can actually search for a variable. That's really sweet. Um, this, it's supposed to be around, oh, wait, 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 wait. There we have it, joystick sensitivity. Thank you for highlighting this in green. <laughs> okay, so we have them two places. We have joystick sensitivity defined for the Canon camera and for the Panasonic camera. And then for the Panasonic camera, that it was the variable was just there in the background. In fact, if you click the variable in the inspector, you will see um, you, you'll see the definition of the, the variable. So we could change it range and, and so on. We'll not do that right now, except we'll just, you know, copy this variable over and call it zoom sensitivity. So let's go and, and, and try that. Um, basically, click on this layer. Down here under variables, we will add a variable called zoom sense. Click. Okay, so you see now we have added a variable in the tree. And this is what is called scoped variables. The variables will now, that variable zoom sensitivity is now only available in this part of the tree and towards the branches. In the root, nobody knows about it. And this is the reason why we can have the same variable inside of Panasonic and Canon. And they are actually not the same. It's the same name, but it's not the same variable. It, it's... Um, it, they can have different values and they affect only the branch they're in. That's really, really awesome. And uh, so having zoom sensitivity here is now uh, our first step into adding zoom sens separate zoom sensitivity for the Panasonic cameras. And I will just go with some values like we have just seen. I don't know, maybe choose five for that. Uh, default to first. Is that a good idea? I think I actually feel like showing more and then add a default value. Say, okay, by default, I want the zoom sensitivity to be 10. We could also, for the instructional purpose of this, just don't. Don't do it. Um, so let's see. Default to first would mean that it's probably going to pick the value 1 up as a default value. And that's, that's really not ideal. Um, no, it is actually not ideal. Let's just type in 10 here. Or maybe we could put in 6. And then you will definitely see that it will pick up the value 6 instead of the value 1, which is otherwise what we would get. Okay. Um, so that's that's it. We don't need to save anything, apparently. So it's, it's now done. Zoom sensitivity is already 2. Uh, okay. So it has picked up some value from before. Uh, too late. <laughs> we would have to, to reboot the controller to really change that. Now, um, the first thing we could do, which would be in line with what we have done so far, would be to add uh, zoom sensitivity to, to the controller here. My suggestion is uh, that we put it on, let me see, um, I think we can put it on a shift level, uh, shift layer, because you see, if we click shift here, we have a number of different things happening on the menu. So maybe we can put zoom sensitivity in here. Um, I now want to, um, let's just turn this one off and uh, then also get rid of the little search field here. Then we go back to um, to the place around here. And then inside of system, <clears throat> in the layer tree, uh, we, we, uh, we're working on encoder number eight, right? And this is where we added joystick sensitivity. So now if you, if you expand that layer like this, you'll see that it has a sub layer and that sub layer gets activated anytime we are holding down the shift key. 
let's test that okay so i'll just 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 look in the tree here on the left i hold this one down i release it again and that layer became active because the variable shift picked up the value one as i pressed this button okay and the moment that happens the behaviors of the same name as defined down here and only by the same name that means encoder one up to eight not the one called shift but those eight are now active they are active they are blue <clears throat> that means they are active you can see that shift the defined behavior for this one is actually on the system layer here that is not being superseded by anything on that layer up here because it's not defined but anyway we just need to go to this one and change what is happening on this one once again, we have a parameter associated with this, which is movement range limit. And for whatever reason, it's not available to us. So we can just substitute it. We'll now choose variable. We'll pick the same as, no, wait, not the same. The zoom sensitivity variable is the one that we'll pick. And uh, we should see it in here. Okay, I'm not entirely sure why we don't see zoom sensitivity. If we search it up, we find it here. So we'll just pick it like that. Remove these modifiers. We don't need them. Are they for something else? Actually confirming the value change. So we don't need that for this kind of thing. Yes, we'll use step change. Step change means that um, the, the, the range of this value is going from 1 to 10. And uh, so with our 10 values, step change is a behavior that will allow you to change them one step at a time as you are moving an encoder. So it's very typical to use step change for any short range menu value like a, a span from 1 to 10. Let's check if this works. If I press this one, we should now see, yes, you see it right here. It says zoom sensitivity, and that is a big success. So I wanna go over and just check that it's also the case in our emulated panel. Of course it will be, but over here, what you can do is hold down shift, and that is uh, shift on your keyboard, sorry, and uh, press the button, and then it will, it will not be the hold function, because what you see me do here is as I'm pressing with my mouse and I'm releasing again, it's like pressing the button and releasing the button, and... Um, that in a case like this where you have like it's like only having one finger when you are using the emulated panel there's no way you can you do more things at the same time so it's helpful to be able to hold down shift and click this one and then it's like you're pressing that button and not releasing it even though you released your mouse so now we can go and change zoom sensitivity up here so we see the variable is changeable. And by the way, you can see this reflected over in this side. See, zoom sensitivity, the, the value is actually reflected in the tree. Isn't that nice? You can follow along what the variable is. So, so far, we have uh, created, uh, not only added joystick sensitivity to the, to the Panasonic side of the configuration, we've also added a new variable called zoom sensitivity. And the, the next thing, the final step actually, would be to associate zoom sensitivity with the joystick action of zooming, maybe including the zoom rocker action of zooming. So that's the next step we'll do. And that brings me to, uh, gives me a chance to tell you a little bit about master behaviors. So first of all, what I want to do is to now uh, put our interest into the joystick. At the moment, there's a little inconsistency of what you see in Reactor and what is actually on the panel the emulated panel you see there's a zoom rock on some components here including the joystick in a nice visual form and in the current development version of reactor i don't have that available in my emulated panel so this is why it's blank right here we should see those components over here so for what we're doing now we'll just disable the this mode toggle simulation mode off which we should do anyway for configuring and then you can see these components are represented by a square so that's just a short explanation, but it should be different whenever you get to try this out yourself. So um, let's uh, let's let's go to the well. We could take this. No, wait. Let's just do the joystick. So we click this one, and that will um, bring us to the place in the configuration tree where joystick rotation, the ring of the joystick, is defined, and that's this behavior, right? So um, if I if I click this one. Um, as I have already done to enable it, you can see that it's it's drawing on a behavior called speed control. This is a standard behavior coming from Skaho. It's always available and it's designed to let you easily take a joystick dimension like pan, tilt, zoom and associate a parameter, which is this one up here that is currently the Panasonic PDC camera's zoom speed. That would likely be just if we click here, you can see this is the same for uh, I now click the left-right dimension of the joystick, and that is pan speed. And then if I click this ring, 
You see, this would be the joystick up down UD, and that would be tilt speed. So clicking this one, the rotational part of the joystick has zoom speed. And the behavior that manages this is called speed control. And speed control means that all I need to do is to define the parameter. I don't need to worry about how it gets interpreted and forwarded and all these things. Those triggers are kind of done for you. If you want to learn more, and we want to learn more in this video, we'll press show more. And there you can go into details about how that event handler actually works and what is hidden inside of this and so on. Now, in this video, we are going really rogue. So we are going to choose show JSON. And JSON means that you get to see the actual underlying data structure of the UI that you have above. JSON is your final destination. If anything is not available in the UI, which we are working constantly to make it available all the time. But if it's not, JSON is your friend. This is where you would then be able to, to do this um, in, in a code environment. And some of you will like that. Some of you will be like, yeah, <laughs> please don't. But um, still, why not give you the option? I hope you will appreciate that. And what we are looking at right here is a little JSON editor where we can see um, the uh, uh, actually every content that is involved in this assignment of behavior to the button. That is a reference to speed control. It is the IO reference, zoom speed for the Panasonic. And then you can see there's an event handler added here called uh, value where it's actually uh, looking to see if um, if there's a variable called invert zoom. If that is true, then it's going to revert the, the, the value of the uh, the zoom function. So what, what we'll do uh, is to, because <clears throat> what we are doing right here in this code is actually overriding something inside that behavior. So it would be very useful to know a little bit more about what is in the master behavior. So if we sh press this one, show parent behavior, we get this one up in a UI in front of us. And there you can see we have the event handler value, which is the one that we are offering a little bit of alternative configuration for. And inside this one, we will find another thing, namely value mapping. I will take this code, value mapping. I also need to notice a approximately which level is it on it's on it's it's like a property of the object value here so let's just close this down and that means i can now copy this in here add it right here and guys if you don't understand this fully you can also just copy paste what i'm doing and you would be able to achieve the same thing um, so by copying that from the master behavior in here i'm now overriding those values i don't need to change the scaling device so that has to be the same as the max value 10. So I'll just remove that one. Let's just press format. But what I will change is this reference because that will now be zoom sense. I am now changing the variable that drives the zoom sensitivity over to zoom sense instead of joystick sensitivity. So that's all I need to do. And then I hope this would work. I'll just copy this. So I'll, I'll just quickly mark it and copy it because we are going to paste this in for the zoom rock as well. So now I save. It seems to be saved successfully. And we can now go to the camera and check this out. So let's do that. OK, uh, so we'll just go to the camera, which is now turned off. Or what's up here? This one as well. It says we are connected. So maybe I just need to reload the pages. Yeah, OK, who knows what happened? some internet fluke now um okay back on track back on track i i wanted to show you that this works so in other words we need to see the panasonic camera let's uh, zoom in on our emulation environment here and um let's try to uh to zoom well do we need to reload this no we're on the panasonic okay we can pan up and down Okay, can we zoom, please? We can zoom. Ah, okay, I just need to zoom in. Okay, so you see, zoom is working, but is the sensitivity working? So let's just bring this all the way down to one. Let's just try that. It doesn't seem like it's picking it up. To be honest, it doesn't seem to make any change. No, it's not. It's not. OK, let's just go and check if we really saved this correctly. So we'll do a little bit of bug fixing here. Now, uh, the, the joystick left right rotation for the 
Let's see, let's enable this guy, go to PC Extreme, maybe zoom in over here, click this one. We had this action here for the Panasonic camera and show Jason, we have this code. Could it be that I have in fact changed this for the Canon camera? I'm afraid I just did so. Not a big deal, but still, um, Well, I could just copy paste this in anyway, because I need to add it here too. So just do that. Save. Now, um, I feel like just checking. So let's just load something else. Load this one up. Is it saved? No, it's not saved. Oh. Okay, guys, I just realized I was a jerk here. I uh, pasted in the wrong place. It should actually be pasted in on this level. So I'll now do that. And if you don't, then it's going to be sorted out for you. So let's just save this and check once again if uh, just go back here. Is it now in place? Yes, it is in place. Uh, this one seems to, yeah, we can remove that, but it's probably just going to pop in once again if we save, is it? Because it's like a, yeah, it's a value that will always just default to zero. But hey, I'm sorry about that. It kind of shows why the JSON editor should be uh, used with care and a certain clear mind, which I may not have at this time of day. Little tip is if you hold down control and the space, and then you actually see what object field names are available to you on this particular level. And that would actually have helped me to confirm that, hey, I'm on the right level. I have value mapping available. Uh, is value mapping in this uh, list? Well, if it's not, then it's probably because we already put it in. So let's just try to remove this and then see once again, if I open this one up, uh, put my cursor here, control space. Do we see value mapping? Yes, it's right there. So you could pick it and then you could work out your object in this way. So I'll just, um, I'll just do like this uh, and just paste it in once again, save it. Okay, so sorry about that. We have it now in place, but that was good learning for all of us, I guess. So we can now check once again, are we in fact using the zoom sense variable to control zoom speed? Go back to the camera. Um, I In this case, I think I just want to go all the way down to one. Let's zoom in. That is a slow zoom speed. Okay, let's just bump this up and then, oh, sorry about that. I pressed the button here on the top. That, that's the home screen button. I need to, that, that's the same as pressing home. So just go back to system and uh, we still have the shift key held down, it, it appears. So we'll just see zoom. Can we zoom quickly? Yes, please, we can do that. Can we zoom slowly? Just confirming. Yes, we can do that. Now, if I if I go back to this scenario where shift is not held down, what about zoom sensitivity? If I turn zoom sensitivity, oh wait, zoom sensitivity is already 10 and zoom sensitivity is, sorry, joystick sensitivity is 10, zoom sensitivity is one. I can now zoom in really slowly, but can I pan and tilt quickly? It appears that I can. So if we turn this all the way down, would I pan? Zoom slowly, pan slowly, yes. So guys, there you see we have now separated zoom sensitivity and joystick sensitivity by means of manipulating the underlying data structure of Reactor. I admit this is advanced, but this is also so powerful because you can customize anything inside of Reactor. Let me explain you what our philosophy is. When you pick a configuration out here on the home screen like this one, it is such an advanced underlying data structure that we have designed for you that makes it easy to just add cameras easily here on the screen. You can do tally forwarding configuration by going in here and plopping data into some specific fields we have selected for you. And that makes it easy to set up all the generic cases with advanced, otherwise advanced situations like mixing and matching brands. And underlying on the other side of the bridge that we are building, we have very advanced, powerful configuration engine that eventually will throw you into JSON to do the most advanced things you can dream of. And this is where you um, need to understand and learn something. And we are bridging these two all the time by building more and more 
features into the home screen that are the most essential and necessary for you guys. But just know that there's always an answer in the configuration tab. So hope that you'll follow these masterclass videos to learn much more about those and um, become an expert in that because that's a really exciting journey in the configuration tab. Just finally, how would you apply this to the Canon camera? Well, you would just do exactly the same. So uh, we did it for the, for, the, um, for the Panasonic camera. Now, if we select the Canon camera here, and if we, um, let me see, um, pick this one, then that still brings us to the Panasonic camera. So let's just, uh, let's go into simulation mode, pick the, the Canon camera here, and then, um, let me see, let's just go to the system menu where we, have it on this encoder up here, this one. So we could put zoom sensitivity here without putting it on a shift level. So if I click this one, oh wait, I need this mode. So just click that. There you have the encoder. And on this one, we could, um, yeah, did we create the variable here? No, we have not created the variable just yet. So we would need to create this variable on, on, the, on the Panasonic side as well. Let's quickly do that, zoom sense. Great. It's there. It has default value of two. Why? Because this value is what comes in by default. We'll change that. Put in 10. Uh, I don't know if I care about the default value. I probably do. I'll just put in 10 there. Remember that if you want it to be full swing from the default, then put this as a default value. Okay. So that is in place now. The uh, encoder here, let's add something to it, namely a variable. So we pick that. We zoom sensitivity yes thank you just pick it and uh, it has step change already so there we go we see zoom sensitivity as a variable for the canon cameras um right here is uh, possible to manipulate let's just try that so we uh, you, we see the variable changing down here as i am uh, changing the encoder forth and back now notice that this zoom sensitivity variable is a different one than the one on Panasonic, just to, to mention that again, this, these, these are two different ones, right? So this is, has a different value than that one, obviously, as I'm changing it up there. And then if we, uh, if we go to the Panasonic camera into the system menu and hold down shift, then we can see the zoom sensitivity we have right there, um, is, um, oh, we changed joystick sensitivity here. I'm not entirely sure how we can actually hold oh, hold down. Okay, perfect. Now, um, yeah, so there you can see we're changing the zoom sensitivity. So same, same thing as, you know, regarding how can you actually change the zoom sensitivity in here, you would uh, do that by um, adding the, the same thing to the, to the joystick uh, rotation dimension. Uh, yeah, why not? Let's, let's try to do that for the completeness of things. Uh, otherwise, I kind of leave you um, with, without that. So no, let's just click it here. So uh, yeah, we are on the Panasonic right now. That is true. Uh, let me go back. So emulation mode, simulation mode over here. Then we disable that and we enable listening mode. We click on this guy. And then for the Canon camera, we've got the joystick rotation. That's all good and great. Let's show the JSON right away. We uh, see the same code we saw before. It's also nicely formatted already. We remember to get in here. This is the right place for our little value change. Remove the comma at the end, format the whole thing. Zoom sensitivity is the variable. Okay, it's in place. Now let's check this for the, for the Canon camera as well. So we will bring this up, having the Canon camera right here. Then going to the, yeah, the camera is selected. That's super nice. Um, on the system menu, we now have zoom sensitivity here. That is three. So let's put that all the way down. Uh, joystick sensitivity is 10. Let's try. Okay. So pan should be quick. Yes. Thank you. It is quick. Zoom. What about that? Zoom is very slow. Okay. That's exactly what we wanted. So what if we change this to a higher value? We could reduce this to a lower value. We should now see zoom being super quick. Yes, and let's just zoom out it once again. And then we have pan being super slow. So that also works. I am so excited about things we could show you. And I think the final one in a masterclass like, like this one would really be to show you how um, we can also manipulate the scope of variables in a 
special way, kind of. Now, I have talked about, <clears throat> I don't know if you're even following at this point, but it's, uh, it's, it's really cool what I'm going to show you right now. So let's just focus on, we have created the same named variable zoom sensitivity two places in the tree. And we have also confirmed that they have different values. Those values are, are, are valid from that point in the tree and outwards. And anything we do inside of this place to change that value uh, will find the first variable in the tree that does this. But what if we create the zoom sensitivity uh, variable on this enclosing layer, the camera controls layer, which is the one that holds both of them? <sighs> so what we can do is to go here Create a variable called zoom sense. Great. <clears throat> and then let's just set its range to 10, just like we did before. Default to first, that's all nice. Show more. <clears throat> Add a default value to 10 as well. Standard stuff, okay? But the point is that we have zoom sensitivity set right here. And now zoom sensitivity on these layers has become deactivated. Now see what that means. It means that the if we start the emulation here once again, <clears throat> the zoom sensitivity variable we have right here is actually going to change. Oh, this would be useful to see a little wider. That value down there. Okay, so I'm oh sorry. Uh, let's just disable listening mode here. Um, zoom sensitivity is six. And I am currently on the pan, uh, Canon camera. I change now to Panasonic. I go over here in the system menu and I change zoom sensitivity right here. And it turns out it's the same variable that I'm affecting. So what you see is by creating this, the, a variable with the same name on a layer mm, closer to the root of the layer tree means that this variable will now overtake any individually defined va variable out in that tree, in that tree branch. And thus, you basically now have a zoom sensitivity that would go for any camera, regardless of whether it's Canon or Panasonic. And um, it, it will work with the lenses as well. Um, I think this video needs to stop, but I just want to remind you of one thing that if you really want to do this yourself, then you also need to do it for the zoom rocker, okay? So you could basically set listening mode up here press the zoom rocker, uh, make some, some action on it, and then it will find the zoom rocker. It's actually right there, just next to the zoom rotation. Pick this one called zoom. That is the rocker on the controller. And you need to do the same going to JSON, paste the same code in, and then you would also have applied zoom speed to the zoom rocker. Thank you for watching, guys. I know it has been a long journey here, but I, I hope you found it uh, inspiring. And uh, if you're still listening, it you, you should consider yourself an expert. Then you are really interested in the finer details of what you can do in Reactor with the Configuration tab.